cooking with Remy. Happy Halloween! Even though it's not Halloween yet. Boo, 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 bum, bum. Ew! As you can tell by my costume and also by the decor in the background, we are doing our first ever themed Cooking with Remy episode and that is for Halloween. These recipes are perfect if you are throwing a Halloween party or if you just like Halloween snacks. I got you covered. Today we are doing five oh. recipes. <laughs> I'm also very excited about these because in a lot of previous Cooking with Remy episodes, some of the recipes were a little hard and you know, a little intensive. Today's recipes are much easier and also incorporate a lot of things that are pretty much already made for you, so it is a match made match made in heaven. I'm gonna take the gloves off and let's get cooking. Beginning with the first recipe, this is a Midwest favorite. I can say that because when I went to the Midwest, this is pretty much all we ate. These are pigs in a blanket, but they look like little mummies. All you need is hot dogs and crescent dough. As I said, super easy. Starting with America's favorite, crescent dough. Oh! Got it. First, I'm putting on some parchment paper and then I'm going to roll out my dough. And we're just gonna spread the dough out. You can use a knife, I'm gonna use a pizza cutter, use whatever, and we're just going to cut this into thin little strips all the way across. They can all be different sizes, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just little strips like so. Spooky dough. Be careful to not cut a finger and we're done. We've got our two ingredients here now. We've got our cut crescent dough and we've got our hot dogs that I pat dry with some paper towels because you know they come in that liquid and we just don't want that liquid, sorry. We're gonna take our hot dog and it's super easy. You just take strips of the crescent dough and you just start wrapping them around and since it's sticky, it just sticks to itself. So just keep kind of wrapping around. You really can't mess this up, I promise. You can also totally use like vegetables or something, I don't know, use whatever you'd like. But you really can't go wrong with crescent dough wrapped around anything. Cute. Once we're done, I'm gonna push the top down a little bit and then take a little strip and kind of wrap around the head, but you wanna leave a little room because we're going to put some eyes on, just like that. Then we're just gonna place them on a baking sheet and I'm gonna finish the rest. Our mummies are done. I love how they get kind of like shriveled up on the inside. The outside gets crispy and brown and golden. And I added on little mustard eyes. I'm gonna go in for a bite. Mm. You can't go wrong. It's salty, it's delicious. It makes the perfect little finger food for a party. Try them out, they're foolproof. Moving on to the next recipe, we are making a Halloween mix. This is perfect if you're throwing a party because you can throw in literally whatever you want. I personally am starting though with Muddy Buddies or Puppy Chow, whatever you call it, but not the original flavor with the peanut butter. Don't get me wrong, it's delicious. We are making cookies and cream. I love cookies and cream anything, and if you've never made homemade Puppy Chow, it's super easy and also tastes so much better when you make it homemade. So, let's get started. For this recipe, it calls for eight Oreos. You can do the eight Oreos like it calls for, but just like garlic, I like cookies a lot, so I'm gonna do a lot more Oreos than what the recipe calls for. But if you wanna be normal, do eight Oreos. You can use a food processor to do this. Mmm, that crunch. But I love my trusty, dirty, yucky magic bullet. <laughs> Now I don't know if you're allowed to shake it. Magic Bullet would probably tell me to not shake it while it's running, but I do it, so. All right, so we're gonna take two large plastic bags. If you've made Muddy Buddies before, then you know that we shake it up in the end of the bags. Now because these are cookies and cream, one needs to be cookies and one needs to be cream. So that's why we're doing two. And I'm gonna take my powdered sugar and equally divide it between the two bags. All right, half in the first bag and then half in the second bag. And then we're also gonna divide in our cookie crumbs that we just made and then we're gonna shake them up. Make sure to zip them up very well if you don't want to be cleaning your kitchen all day long. Just give it a good mix up so it's well incorporated. Just like this. It should look like spackle. <laughs> Drywall, delicious. Now we've got our cookies and our cream. We've got semi-sweet chocolate chips. We've got white chocolate chips. You can use dark milk, whatever you'd like. And a little notch of shortening. I'm gonna put a little bit into each bowl. This is just gonna help melt our chocolate down and make it really nice and luscious. 
And we're gonna microwave these at 30 second intervals until it's fully smooth and creamy, and then we will come back. All right, guys, our chocolate is melted. I have three cups of Chex in each bowl. You can make more if you'd like. You're gonna want more, trust me. Now, we are going to take our chocolate and throw it into the Chex. Mix very, very carefully and try to coat each one nice and evenly. Be super, super gentle. Take your time, and eventually, even though it looks like it won't cover it all, it will. All right, our chocolate has coated the checks, and we've got our bags of powdered sugars and Oreo, and we are going to spoon our checks right into these bags. Now we're gonna zip up the bag, leave a little air in there, and just start shaking it up with the powdered sugar, and it's gonna coat each individual checks. Just shake, shake, shake. You can also double bag if you want a little reinforcement, but these look so good. Now for the semi-sweet. Don't be afraid to ask your friends for help. Winnie, can you help me? Yeah. <laughs> so much easier. Easier. Make it a friend activity. Get your mom involved. <laughs> Woo hoo! Wow, they look so yummy. Taste test. <gasps> oh my god. Look at that. Perfect. Here I go. <laughs> I'm gonna mix them together in the same bag. Oh my god, that is so good. <laughs> wow. Make sure that you've got some air in there, it makes it way easier to mix. Actually gonna double bag this just to be safe and because I have the bag already. And then shake again! Get crazy with it. Woo! Yeah! Like you just beat Jake Paul. <laughs> Just kidding, don't come for me, you scare me. And that's how you make cookies and cream muddy buddies. Ding. Everyone try my homemade muddy buddies. Mmm. Oh, it is oh so good. Mm. Now you can easily serve the puppy chow how it is. It's obviously amazing, but to make it a little bit more spooky, I'm going to layer this in a bowl, and you can add whatever you like to this. I'm gonna add in some Halloween M&Ms. We've got here a mixture of candy corn and those little cute pumpkins. So I'm just gonna add these in as well, even though I hate them. Somehow other people enjoy eating them. Don't get it, but yeah. And some dark chocolate pretzels because there's not enough chocolate already. Just gently mix it and then just keep layering. And keep sneaking them. I don't need lunch today. And you can really put whatever, put nuts, popcorn, whatever it is that your guests or you will like. I would literally eat this all in a sitting. And boom, you've got Halloween candy, muddy buddy mix, whatever you wanna call it, it's delicious and you need to try it. Let's move on to the next one. Moving on to quite possibly the easiest party recipe in the world, we are making a dip, but not just any dip. We are making buffalo chicken dip. It is so yummy, really easy to make, comes together really quickly, and what I love about it is you can prep it the night before, keep it in the fridge, pop it in like 15 minutes before your guests come, and it is ready to go, super hot, super delicious, and we're putting a little Halloween twist on it. This recipe is really easy, you just need shredded chicken. I have here a rotisserie chicken to make it even easier that I just shredded up. If you don't want to use a rotisserie chicken, you can also totally use use just boiled chicken at home. I love a rotisserie chicken because it's super cost effective and also already comes packed with a bunch of flavor. Ah, flying chicken. Mm. Once it's broken up, we're gonna go in with our sour cream and our cream cheese. I do a whole block of cream cheese because I love the tangy flavor that it adds. And it also helps if you let it soften for a little bit before, but you can always use cold cream cheese if you forget. No worries, I always forget to set things out. So, I feel you. Then we're gonna go in with our sour cream. I start with half a cup and then I work in more as I just kind of look at the consistency. But we'll start with half a cup and we will mix this all up together. Once that's come together, we're gonna add in our cheeses. You can use whatever cheese you like. I like using a mixture of sharp cheddar. Also, if you have the time, freshly shred your cheese, it's so much better. And mozzarella. You can do Colby, you can do Parmesan, you can do literally whatever cheese you'd like. But these are really nice and they just kind of melt together really well. It's looking a little thick, so I'm gonna add in some more sour cream. Maybe another half cup or so. There we go. Now here I have three chopped green onions, the whole entire things, as well as half of a yellow onion. This just adds some nice bite to the dip, and when you bake it, it just becomes nice and delicious and soft. Mmm, it smells so good. Just keep mixing. If you think you've mixed too much, keep mixing. Now we're gonna season. So I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of ranch seasoning, a little bit of salt. Again, the rotisserie chicken already has a lot of flavor, so just a little salt, but if you're using boiled chicken, add a lot more salt. You already know on Cooking with Remy, garlic and onion powder, fresh cracked black pepper, 
<laughs> and then we're gonna do a quarter cup of Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce. This is the game changer, and I love this on pretty much everything. So start with a little bit. If you want it to be spicier, obviously add more. If you want it to be less spicy, add less. Woohoo! Now we are ready to bake. I'm just gonna take my dip and put it all into this little eight inch cake pan. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is just to get all the flavors really nice and melded together. Again, kind of break down those onions, melt the cheese, and just make sure everything tastes really nice and yummy. And it's also just gonna warm the dip up. You can eat it cold if you'd like, but that's a lot of raw onions. So that just depends on you. And we're just gonna spread it down so it's nice and even in the pan. And then we're gonna bake this for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees, and then we'll move on to the next step. While our dip is in the oven, we're going to prepare our little vessels to hold the dip. These are the little Halloween twists that I was talking about. We have little orange bell peppers here. Now you can fill this in a pumpkin. You can do anything that's orange. It just makes it cute and holiday-ish. Also, fun fact, if your bell pepper won't stay flat like these two, you can just gently cut off the bottom. And there, it'll stay. You're just going to cut the tops off of your bell peppers and we're gonna make them look like little jack-o'-lanterns. And just cut straight down like that. And then we're just gonna pull the insides out until it's nice and clean and just keep doing that. All right, now that our little bell peppers are chopped and cleaned, you can totally leave them like this if you just want them to be little pumpkins. But to make them jack-o'-lanterns, we need to make faces in them. So I'm just gonna take a little paring knife and just you know cut out little triangles for eyes, little mouths, just cute little things like that. All right, guys, as you can see, the dip is done and I've already spooned it into one of our bell peppers. It smells amazing. Of course, you can serve it normally in the tin, which is usually what I do anyways, with just like chips or other veggies or something like that. But I just thought this was so cute. You just stuff them and then just put the tops right back on. Boom. They look like pumpkins. All right, guys, our dip is done. How cute are these little jack-o'-lantern bell peppers? I'm serving it here today with some tortilla chips, celery, and carrots, but serve it with pita chips. Serve it with literally whatever. It will be good on a sock. Time for the taste test. I'm gonna eat mine with a tortilla chip because I like the crunch. Mmm. You literally can't mess this up at all. It's so easy. I'm gonna eat a bunch of this. Let's go to the next one. This next recipe is so cute and so easy to make. I just bought a store-bought pizza crust in a can and I baked it, par-baked it to the directions on the canister. Basically, I rolled it out and baked it for eight minutes at 400 degrees. Now, I'm just gonna put some marinara sauce or pizza sauce, whatever you wanna use, on your crust and just spread it all around. We're just making a simple cheese pizza and we're gonna top it with some fun Halloween-themed toppings after mozzarella cheese all over. And now I'm gonna bake this for about eight minutes at 400 degrees, and in the meantime, we'll work on our toppings. Moving on to our toppings. I've prepped some here with some movie magic. We have black olives, as well as some mozzarella cheese, the ball kind, not the shredded kind. I love this kind. So we're gonna take our little olives. One side has a little hole where they took the pit out, and then the other side is the top. We're gonna use the top side as the body of the spider. So you wanna cut down maybe like about a third or so and keep that as the body. And the rest we're gonna use as a leg. So you're just gonna chop it into like little baby thin rings, as thin as you can get it. Oh, it's okay if you mess it up. Just cut these into little legs, just like that. Now with our mozzarella cheese, I'm going to cut it into nice thick slices, maybe about half an inch thick or so. And then we're gonna freehand cut out little ghost figures. There you go, little ghost body. And then save all these because they're delicious and eat them with a the salad. Cute. All right guys, our pizza's out of the oven. Now I'm going to plop our little cute ghosts down. Adorable. Last little guy. They kind of look like little angels. And then around the ghosts, we're gonna put the spiders. So I'm gonna take the little bodies and put them down first. All right guys, our pizza is done. How cute does this look? You can put it back in the oven if you want the cheese to melt a little bit, but the residual heat made the mozzarella a little bit gooey and delicious. And that's it. Super simple, super easy. We've got a cute little Halloween themed pizza. Last but not least, we have saved the easiest 
for last. These are adorable little ghost fruit skewers. You can use literally whatever fruit you'd like, grab whatever's in the fridge, grab some marshmallows from the pantry, and you can make this really quickly. All you need for this are skewer sticks. You can use chopsticks if you don't have any. An assortment of fruit. I'm using green grapes, strawberries, and pitaya, but feel free to use whatever, obviously. And little marshmallows, and then lastly, just some little black gel food coloring, and we'll get to that at the end. All we're gonna do is just stack our fruits on, just keep going and that's it. Super easy. Now, for the fun part, we're gonna turn these little marshies, just a little face, surprise little face. <gasps> what? Ah, oh, shoot, I should have started from the left. I didn't think this one through. All right, guys, these are our cute little fruit skewers. Just something to add a little health into your life after the dip and the pizza and the muddy buddies and the hot dogs. I hope you guys enjoyed our first official themed episode of Cooking with Remy. I had so much fun. I can't wait for all the other holidays that are coming up very soon. Comment down below who you want to see on the show, what you guys want to see me make, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.